By the end of this video, you will be able to see how to configure view item event on Shopify using Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4. Before we begin, we need to make sure that we have proper access to Google Analytics 4, GTM containers and Shopify backend. To check what access level you have, you can go to the admin section on your GA4 property and then click on property access management. This will take you to the options where you can see what level of access you have for the GA4 account. All you need to have to make sure that you have admin access to the GA4 property. Otherwise, you won't be able to make all the changes that we need inside the GA4 account. Great. Once you have verified that you have the admin access to the GA4 property, let's move on to the Google Tag Manager container. On the GTM container, you can go to the admin section of the container that you have. And on the right side, you will be able to see the account user permissions. However, all we need is the user management on the left side under container options. Here, you need to make sure that you have published access to the container. So all the changes that we can make are live on the website. And since the customer pixel do not allow the debugging view, we need to publish all of the changes one by one. And lastly, you need to make sure that you have proper access to the customer pixels. On the Shopify backend, under the settings, you will be able to see this customer events option. Make sure that you have the option to create pixels, connect them and delete them if we need. First thing first, we need to make sure that our Google Tag Manager container is properly firing on the website. So what you can do is that copy the code that I have created for you in the description of the video and come to this place. Once you are on the customer event section, click on add custom pixel on the top right corner. Let's rename it data layer code and hit add pixel. Great. This step is really important, so make sure that your permissions are set to not required and the data sale is set to this does not qualify as the data sale. Copy the code from the description and paste it right here. We have to make one minor change in this one and that is the GTM container ID. So let's go to our Google Tag Manager account and let's copy the container ID from right here. Once you have copied the ID, go back to the Shopify backend and replace it with this triple X. Great, now we can hit save and connect our pixel. On the top right, you will see the option to connect the pixel and great. Now we have successfully connected the customer pixel with the Shopify backend and we should be able to see view item list event inside the data layer. To verify, let's just go to the any page of the website and let me also open the inspect tab. And to make things easier for ourselves, what I'm going to do is just filter all the events based on the data layer name. So you can go to console and then here let's on the console, let's search for data layer. You can see that we have an object for the page view and let's go to the any collection pages because collection pages are where we fire the view item list event. So once you are on the collection page, which or any of the category pages on your website, you should be able to see a view item list event firing on the website. You can also see that it has an items array and since I only have three products, you can see we have all the three products firing here. You, they have the information about the brand, ID and URL and all the things that we need for this event. Great. So first thing first, we have to create a configuration tag that will fire on this page view event and then we need to create a GA4 event tag that will fire on this page. Perfect. Let's go to our Google Tag Manager container and under the versions, we are going to create a new tag that will be responsible for the configuration event. Let's click on new. And as you see, we can, we could have used the all pages trigger, but we don't want to trigger the event on all pages. We want to trigger it on the custom event, which basically is the page view request. So let's copy the name of this event from here and go back to the Google Tag Manager container to create a custom trigger. To create a custom trigger, I'm going to use custom event. So let's rename it at not customer. Let's rename it as page underscore view. And let's rename this as custom event page underscore view. This is the, just the standard practice that I use. Like abbreviation of the trigger should be there. For the tag configuration, let's select Google Analytics and let's select Google Tag. For the measurement ID, you can go back to the Google Analytics property. You can search for the ID right here, or you can just search for it on the top bar. Let's do it here. Since we have the search feature, we should utilize it. Let's copy the measurement ID, go back to the Google Tag Manager container. And you know, I love constant variables. So we are going to create a constant variable for this ID. Great. So let's rename this as GA4 measurement ID and hit save. Great. Let's rename this tag as GA4 configuration tag and hit save. Perfect. This should 
automatically add the GA4 configuration tag. However, as I mentioned in the introduction of the video that we cannot use the preview window, so we have to submit the changes so we can actually see them inside the Google Analytics and on the website. So let's go back to the website and hit refresh on the page. Once you hit refresh on the page, you should be able to see that using this Google Lag Taxi Assistant Chrome extension that the Google Tag Manager container is firing on the website and the GA4 tag has also fired on the website. You can also verify the same information by going to the network tab and you can see that there is a collect request that was sent for scroll which is an automatic event and there is another request which was sent for page view. You can also verify the same information using the adverse data layer and you can see that this page view request was sent to the GA4 account. Great, so the page view event is working fine. Now we have to create a view item list event. For the view item list event, the name of the event is view items list. So let's copy this event name, go back to the Google Tag Manager container and let's create a trigger first. To, to, to create the trigger, let's go to the trigger section, click on new, select a custom event and rename this as custom event view item underscore list. We have to do the same thing for variables because we need variables for value, we need variables for currency and the items array. If you go back to the website, you see that we have all of that information inside the e-commerce object. We have e-commerce.currency, e-commerce.items and e-commerce.value. So let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container and create all of these three data layer variables. For the first data layer variable, let's do e-commerce.currency and let's rename this as dlv e-commerce.currency and now we have to do the same thing for e-commerce.value so let's rename this as dlv e-commerce.value and lastly we have to do the same thing for e-commerce.items great we have successfully created all the variables all the triggers that we need the last thing left is creating the tag for the view item list event so let's go to the tag section and create a new tag for the trigger, we have already created a trigger which will only fire on this event. So we have selected that one. For the tag configuration, we are going to select the GA4 event tag. Measurement ID, we created a constant variable for that when we were creating the configuration tag. So let's select that measurement ID. The event name is view item list. And we do want to send some parameters. We want to send value. We want to send currency. And lastly, we want to send the items array. The value is going to be inside e-commerce.value, currency is inside e-commerce.currency, and lastly, items array is inside e-commerce.items. Perfect, let's rename this tag to GA4 EEC view underscore item underscore list event. EEC just stands for enhanced e-commerce. So let's hit save. Unfortunately, again, we won't be able to test it using the preview window. So we have to publish the changes. So let's publish the changes. You can rename it whatever you want. But let's just publish the changes. And on our website, let's do a hard refresh. So the new Google Tag Manager container with the updated code snippet fires on here. Once the website has been loaded on the page, you can verify that the Google Tag Manager container is firing, the GTM code is firing. And you can see this batch request where the view item list event has fired and it has three different products that were visible on the page. There is also value, there is also currency. This tag, this request is being generated from the adverse data. You can also verify the same information by going to the network tab. And you can see that this, since this was a batch request, we have sent the page view event and the view item list event with all the product information right there. You can also see this information if you go to the real-time events on Google Analytics and you can see that there is one user who has done some of the events on the website. If you click on real-time view, you should be able to see the information about the recent event coming in on the event section and you can see that the view item list event has successfully fired on the page and you can see that it has a currency option and the value option. You won't be able to see the items array right here because that is only available either on the browser or on the debug view. If you want to see how to configure add to cart event, just click here.